In this section, we're going to highlight how transmission of TB from badgers to cattle may occur, identify potential risk areas on farms, and look at some simple measures that you can take to increase your wildlife biosecurity and reduce the risk of transmission of TB from badgers to cattle. In cattle, bovine TB is a chronic disease and can take years to develop. Clinical signs, such as weakness, coughing and weight loss, are now rarely seen in Great Britain due to the government's compulsory TB testing and slaughter programme. Inhalation is the primary route of transmission between cattle, although consumption of contaminated material may also be important. Cattle to cattle transmission usually happens when animals are in close contact with each other, for example in buildings. Bacteria released into the air through coughing and sneezing can spread the disease to uninfected animals. Transmission to calves may also occur through drinking contaminated milk. The relationship between badgers, cattle and bovine TB is extremely complex. Badgers undoubtedly become infected with bovine TB and can pass it on. But what proportion of cattle herd breakdowns are caused by badgers is unknown. Starting with a cattle herd, TB may be transmitted between animals in the herd, could be bought or hired in from elsewhere, and may inadvertently be sold onto other herds. Similarly, in a badger social group, transmission may occur between individuals of the same group and also to and from individuals in neighbouring groups. TB can also be spread from badgers to cattle. This can be from direct contact between the two or by indirect contact with infected faeces, urine or other excretions. There is also the potential for cattle to infect badgers in the same ways. In order to reduce these risks, you need to break the potential transmission routes. There are simple ways that can help achieve this through biosecurity and husbandry measures and pasture management. The most obvious place where badgers and cattle are likely to come into contact with each other is here at pasture. While direct nose-to-nose -nose contact does occur, it's relatively infrequent as badgers generally avoid cattle where possible. Unfortunately, there is very little that can be done to prevent this happening. However, there are steps that can be taken to reduce the risks of transmission at pasture mainly by preventing cattle access to areas of badger activity. The first step towards this is to walk all field boundaries looking for signs of badger activity. If you have badgers on your farm, each social group will have a number of sets within their territory. Sets tend to be found undercover, in wooded areas, on slopes, where the soil is easy to dig and well drained. But while that is the ideal situation, you'll also find them in overgrown hedgerows clumps of dense vegetation and banks along field edges. The most obvious signs of a badger set are the presence of entrance holes. This is another good sign that you've got badgers in the area. This is a spoil heap that's all the soil that has come out from when they've dug the tunnels down underneath. And just over here is the entrance to a set. As they dig the tunnel out, they bring all of the soil out and that leads to these built up areas of the soil that's a slightly different colour usually from the soil on the top. This is also a very typical shape of a badger hole, which is usually flatter on the bottom than it is on the top. And it's rounded, it's sort of like a D that's on its side almost. And that's quite typical of badgers rather than foxes or rabbits or any other animal that might be in a burrow. This one's clearly quite active, as you can see that the badgers have come up through the hole and out over the spoil heap quite recently. Sometimes footprints and claw marks may also be seen. Internally, sets can be very complex, with hundreds of metres of tunnel systems, numerous chambers, and can cover an area underground of several hundred metres square. In high density areas, there are usually three to six sets per territory, but in lower density areas, there can be up to 40. There is likely to be one main set that has multiple entrances. This tends to be permanently occupied and used for breeding. Other sets can also have multiple entrances, but may not always be in use. There may also be small sets with only one or two holes leading to a simple tunnel, which are only used occasionally as a temporary refuge. Main sets can continue to be used over many decades and possibly even longer. Disturbance may lead to temporary abandonment of a set, but permanent desertion of a main set is rare. The next step is to locate their latrines. Another sign that you've got badgers in the area are badger latrines, which are um, areas of small pits where they deposit their faeces. This is actually quite a big one, but you can find just one or two holes that have got the badger faeces in them, like here. 
Quite often badger latrines are quite close by to set, so if you find a big latrine like this, it's very likely that you've got a badger set not too far away. This is um, an older faeces, it's probably been there for a few nights now, but this is a fresh one that was probably only deposited last night. Underneath both of them you will find faeces that have been there from previous nights. Latrines are often found near a main set, on territory boundary paths, at crossing points, along linear features such as hedgerows, fence lines or roads, and at features such as pylons. They may also occur away from these features, such as halfway along a path that crosses a large field. They also have latrines on territory boundaries, where they um, communicate information through the scents that they deposit at the latrines between different members of different social groups to try and ensure that the territory boundaries stay strong. When you're looking for signs of badgers on your farms, you want to be looking for badger paths. This is a very good example of a clear, defined path. You won't always find them this clear on your farm, but this is what to look for. Badgers are creatures of habit and wear paths along routes to places of importance within their territories, such as between sets, latrines, main feeding grounds and along territory boundaries. These paths can be hundreds of metres long and while they generally follow linear features, paths crossing pasture can easily be seen, especially in the early spring before much vegetation has grown and territorial patrolling is at its peak. I don't know how well you can see this, but this is another good example of a badger path which runs right from the wooded area at the top down through the pasture towards the farm buildings below. Mark down obvious runs and the locations of any latrines that you find on your map. Other signs of badger activity that you can look out for are hair caught on fences, footprints and snuffle holes. Badgers are able to remember the location of different food types and often return to good foraging areas. Um, they will usually dig up uh, food either from the top few centimetres of the soil or from immediately on top of it and what you might find is something like this which is a what's termed a snuffle hole which you can see has got some badger paw prints in it and it's from them digging up the earthworms from the pasture. Once you have a good picture of the local badger activity you can decide on the most appropriate biosecurity measures for your farm. <laughs>